are more than 8,000 islands off the coast of Australia, but few rival this one for wonder. It's just a speck in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and yet it is literally bursting with life. This is Christmas Island as you've rarely seen it before, in all its natural splendour. All those beautiful crystals that come up in the light. You won't believe how close you'll come to many of its creatures on land and in the sea. From one-on-one -on -one encounters... They look like they've walked straight off the set of a sci-fi film. <laughs> ..to one on tens of millions. The scale of it is just spectacular. This really is one of Mother Nature's greatest shows on Earth. Christmas Island is particularly multicultural and has been throughout most of its history. But first settler honours belong to the Cocos Malay. They arrived in November 1888 with members of the Clooney's Ross family who ruled the remote Cocos Islands. They planned to lease this island from the colonial empire and, to stake their claim, established a small settlement at Flying Fish Cove. Their interest initially was in timber, but they soon saw more value in phosphate, opening a mine with John Murray, the man credited with its discovery. Now, John Murray wasn't your typical entrepreneur. He was actually an eminent naturalist who recognised the enormous opportunity Christmas Island presented for science. In the late 19th century, it was one of the last reasonably sized unspoilt islands on Earth, a 135 square kilometre haven that had never been inhabited by humans. Murray was captivated by its raw beauty and mindful of the need to preserve it. So despite his commercial intentions, he commissioned a study of the island's natural history. The result was Charles Andrews' monograph of Christmas Island, a classic work that effectively established a baseline for a century of ecological research. It goes without saying that a great deal changed once humans were added into the equation. But nature, to this day, rules the roost. The island's unique ecology endures. 63% of the terrestrial landscape is now a national park, and the marine environment on its doorstep is unbelievably pristine. There are wetlands of international importance, seabird habitat that's second to none, and even a niche for this resplendent little reptile, the endemic blue-tailed skink. How each and every organism managed to arrive and survive is the ultimate evolutionary tale, best told by veteran park ranger Max Orchard. 